Thank you, Father, for the time that you have given us. May your spirit lead us in this presentation in Jesus' name. Amen. Greetings, brothers and sisters, colleagues and friends all over the world. I want to welcome you all in a very special way. It's Sunday morning here in Southern Africa. We have just woken up to the news of uh, Iran attacking Israel. Very, very interesting development what is happening in the world. The question is, what exactly does this all mean? What should we do as the children of God? It's uh, something that uh, has been anticipated because there has been a discussion between the Americans and the Iranians that uh, the Iranians were going to attack Israel. Very, very interesting, brothers and sisters. You realize that Iran has got nuclear weapons, Israel has got nuclear weapons, and uh, if they decide to escalate this, this could be very, very, very catastrophic in many respects. However, brothers and sisters, we know that right now Israel is fighting in Gaza but uh, there has been quite a lot of different attacks from different fronts and now as we have learned today America UK France and many other countries have decided to join this war so very interesting but what should we do as a children of God and what is the call of God what is the meaning of all this that's what we're going to cover in the final segment of this presentation but before that let's actually you look at what the Guardian is reporting this morning, Sunday, the 14th of April, 2024. U.S. and U.K. forces help shoot down Iranian drones over Jordan, Syria, and Iraq. U.S. defense official says action is part of a ironclad commitment to Israel security, with U.K.'s Royal Air Force also involved in regional operations. So as you can see, countries are very quick to go and help Israel. Of course, that's what's happening in the war, is it? I want you to understand this from the onset, brothers and sisters. The one that's causing these wars is the devil. The reason why people are fighting, it is simply because they are possessed by the devil. Especially, I'm going to bring this in context. Now, it says a hastily assembled coalition, including the US, UK, has helped Israel shoot down Iranian drones over Jordan, Iraq, and Syria in an effort to blunt the attack and prevent an uncontrolled escalation. So this is what they've done. So there's been quite a lot of scramble of uh, jets, the fighting, the Iron Dome responding to what is happening. Now, I want you to look at this clip and then we explain something after this clip, three clips. Breaking news Follow. tonight, Iran has launched drones and missiles against targets in Israel. ABC's Josh Eininger has the details. In the middle of the night, drones streaked across the sky over the Holy Land. Israel's military defense is in overdrive to respond to an unprecedented attack by Iran, which the IDF says launched more than 200 drones from inside Iran, as well as from proxies in Iraq, Syria, and southern Lebanon. A U.S. official tells ABC News the targets were military bases, including one that housed F-35 fighter jets. They now, brothers and sisters, I want you to understand this. America cashes, cashes millions out of war. Many countries are benefiting immen immensely in this war, while others are being destroyed. So the reality which we cannot run away from is that this is business. While this is business, it's important to realize that the man of sin is behind. Now let's look at the response from Israel, from America, and from uh, Iran. Just follow the clip. This is a severe and dangerous escalation. Our defensive and offensive capabilities are at the highest level of readiness. A post on X by the Iranian government through their permanent mission to the UN said the attack can be, quote, deemed concluded and warned the U.S. against getting involved. Though U.S. military officials tell Fox they have already shot down at least one Iranian drone. President Biden returning to Washington Saturday night, convening a meeting of the National Security Council. The White House maintaining its commitment to Israel is ironclad, saying in a statement, the United States will stand with the people of Israel and support their defense against these threats from Iran. Now, Iran is saying, you, Israel, you started this by attacking our embassy. Something very interesting is that many countries the Euro, the, in Europe, like France, like United Kingdom and America, they did not condemn what Israel did by attacking the Iranian embassy. And today they are very quick in helping Iran to defend itself from Israel. What exactly do we make 
of all this now let's look at the involvement of this country what exactly does this mean so we can see that uh, the countries are standing with israel now has israel done something that is good no it has not it has actually provoked so what exactly is behind this as i've said brothers and sisters it's very plain and clear that behind all this is the devil himself now let's look at the clip and let's hear what iran say and also we follow the reaction after the drones launched, Iran's supreme leader Ali Khamenei said the evil regime will be punished. President Biden cut short his weekend trip to Delaware, returning to the White House Saturday afternoon to huddle with his national security team. Israel's Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu said the country's vaunted Iron Dome missile defense system was ready for the onslaught. We are prepared for any scenario, he added, both in defense and attack. Whoever hurts us, he vowed, we hurt him. According to a U.S. official, American forces shot down some of the Iranian drones headed toward Israel. The U.S. military was already increasing its presence in the Middle East. Now, something very interesting. Iran will say Israel is an evil nation. Israel will say Iran is an evil nation. Now, the one who brings evil or the one who causes evil, in fact, the one who is evil is the devil himself. It's important to realize that the retaliation of Iran and also the attack of Israel, the perpetrator is the devil himself. Now the question is, is there a better devil among these countries? They are all the same. They are all in the same boat. It is important to understand that the instrument which is using both or the power that is using both is the devil devil himself so there is no better devil in israel neither is there better devil in, in in iran and all these countries which are intervening to help they are just doing the biddings of the devil now the question is brothers and sisters what exactly does this mean to we the children of god should we be worried about this should we be anxious about this now when you look at the reports you realize that right now, I've just seen the reports, the Indian news are reporting that Putin has decided to stand with Iran. While America, France, UK, Jordan are standing with Israel. Now, what happened if this escalates? What would be the meaning of all this? But, brother and sister, there is nothing to worry because Matthew chapter 24, 16, the Bible says, And you shall hear of wars and rumors of war. See that you not be troubled. You be not troubled. For all these things must come to pass, but the end is not yet. So there's nothing to be troubled about this. It's going to get worse before it gets better. In fact, it's not going to get better in this world. It only gets better by the coming of the Lord Jesus Christ. And the Bible is saying, do not be troubled by what is happening in Israel, but it's what is happening in Iran, by what is happening in Palestine, by what is happening in Ukraine. These things are going to happen, but the end is not yet. War is not an indication of the time of the end. War is just an indication that, you know, Jesus is still to come. Remember, war started in heaven, Revelation chapter 12, verse 7, and there was war in heaven, Mike and in his angels. So, the day when the devil rebelled there was war and the devil when the day when the devil will be destroyed and there will be war so the people of god are not to be dismayed they are not to be worried about this remember brothers and sisters when jesus will return he will find people alive here on earth remember the point i've mentioned israel has got nuclear weapons Iran has got nuclear weapons. The bakers of Israel, America, UK, France have got nuclear weapons. The bakers of Iran, if it's Russia or North Korea, they all have nuclear weapons. So if they are to use nuclear weapons, they may. But understand Revelation chapter 7 very well that God's angels, the four angels, they are holding the winds of the earth until the children of God have settled into the truth, both intellectual and spiritually so ours brothers and sisters at this juncture is to let the world know about the true god we are told in the book uh, great country page 589 certain delights in all for it excites the worst passions of the soul and then sweeps into eternity its victims steeped 
in vice and blood. It is his object to incite the nations to war against one another, for he can thus divert the minds of the people from the work of preparation to stand in the day of God. You know, we will be very much concerned. Sometimes we take this personal, but let me tell you something, brothers and sisters. It's very clear. It is the devil behind. And it is the desire of the devil that our minds may be diverted from the work that is important. And then we'll focus on trying to hunt it. So how many drones have they shot? What has been the conviction of America? What has Russia said? Brothers and sisters, understand this very well. It is the devil who is using all this nation. There is nothing to worry about this, but there's something important that we need to understand. It's our responsibility. Inspiration makes it very clear to us what is happening and what will happen and the position of God in all this. Uh, Maranatha page 174 says, The judgments of God are in the land. The wars and rumors of war, the destruction by fire and floods say clearly that the time of trouble which is to increase until the end is very near at hand. So we are warned that this time of trouble is going to increase and is going to get much worse. I wonder if they are going to rebuild Gaza again as it was. I wonder if they are going to rebuild Ukraine as it was. But one thing which is certain is that these things are going to get much worse. Why? Because the world is teared with the spirit of war. The prophecies of the 11th of Daniel have almost reached their final fulfillment. Now remember the final part of the book of Daniel chapter 11 talks about the papacy taking over the seed. So nations will fight, nations will be angry, but they will hand over the rulership to the papacy and the ultimate war is a fight against the children of God the persecution of the saints of God in chapter 12 verse 1 of Daniel we are told that at that time shall Michael stand the great prince he will stand to defend the people of God so therefore brothers and sisters we are going to see quite a lot of this happening these tribes will get worse much much worse all these weapons they are making, they are going to use them. But God will preserve his children. When Jesus will return, he will find people alive here on earth. We are told in Maranatha 174, soon strife among nations will break out with an intensity that we do not now anticipate. So the intensity will be so great. The present is a time of overwhelming interest to all living. Rulers and statesmen, men who occupy position of trust and authority, thinking men and women of all class have their attention fixed upon the events taking place about us. They are watching the strained, re restless re relation that exists among the nations. The reason why America has stationed its forces in the Middle East it is because uh, he's afraid of what could happen. The reason why they've stationed quite a lot of forces in Europe, it is because they are concerned what may happen. The reason why they've stationed some of their forces in Africa is one and the same. Nations are very much afraid of what is about to happen and they are angry. But of course, brothers and sisters, we need to know that the reason behind all this, the real power behind, is the power of the devil himself. But what should we do as a children of God? Now, the same book Maranatha 174 says a moment of respite has been graciously given us of God every power lent us of heaven is now to be used in working for the pre for the perishing in ignorance so if we are going to use all our power to work for those who are perishing in ignorance it means that we need to deliver this truth which God has given us to warn the world without delay to give the loud to the message of the present truth, to give a warning message to the world that the world may be ready for the coming of the Lord Jesus Christ. Our responsibility is to preach the gospel with agency so that the children of God may repent. Remember chapter 24 of Matthew verse 14 says, and this gospel of the kingdom shall be preached in all the world as a witness unto all nations and then shall the end come. So this is what God has called us for to do, brothers and sisters, to preach the gospel, to warn the people, 
to bring the three angels' message, to warn the people to flee from Babylon, to help people to understand the forces behind all this, to help the community to know that we do not have a lasting city, but we've got one to come, which the builder and maker is Christ himself. If ever we are expecting to have peace here on earth, brothers and sisters, we are very much mistaken. It's going to get much worse until the coming of the Lord Jesus Christ. Evangelism, page 219 says, The coming of the Lord is near than when we first believed. The great controversy is nearing its end. Every report of calamity by sea or land is a testimony to the fact that the end of all things is at hand. Wars and rumors of wars declare it. Is there a Christian whose pulse does not beat with quickened action? as he anticipated the great events opening before us. But brothers and sisters, as the great events who open before us are opening before us, we are concerned with life, we are worried with life, we are worried with destruction, we are concerned with how much we are going to lose. But brothers and sisters, we need to be more concerned whether our names are written in the book of life. Because all this is happening, it's a warning to us to prepare for the coming of the Lord Jesus Christ. We are told that the Lord is coming. We hear the footsteps of an approaching God. As he comes to punish the world for its iniquity, we are to prepare the way for him by acting our part in getting a people ready for the great, for the great day. The question I ask myself is, what am I doing in getting the world ready? Why, how am I involved in the preaching of the gospel? How am I involved in the warning of the nations? How am I involved to give the trumpet a certain sound? How am I involved? What exactly is my responsibility? But now I want to end with uh, volume two, TT, six, uh, 369 paragraph one. It says, we are standing upon the threshold of great and solemn events. Prophecies are fulfilling. Strange, eventful history is being recorded in the books of heaven. Everything in our world is in agitation. There are wars and rumors of wars. The nations are angry and the time of, of the dead has come. What is this time? That they should be judged. In other words, this is a time of investigative judgment which is taking place at the moment and soon the judgment will go to the living. Events are changing to bring about the day of God which which hastes greatly. Only a moment of time as it were yet remains. Oh yes, only a moment of time remains and brothers and sisters because a, sim a small a, a small amount of time has remained we need to make our calling and election sure it ends by saying but while already nations but while already, already nations is nation is rising against nation and kingdom against kingdom there is not now a general engagement as yet the four winds are held until the servants of God shall be sealed in their foreheads. Then the powers of earth will marshal their forces for the last great battle. Oh yes, once God has finished sealing his people, then the powers of the earth will marshal their forces for the last great battle. Brothers and sisters, this is a clear indication now, for all those 200 drones or between 200 and 500 drones which have been attacked on Israel, much of them have been intercepted, so they say. There has been a minor damage to an army base and a little injury to a, a small injury to the little girl, so they say, if they are telling the truth. One thing which is plain and clear is that God is holding the four winds. Imagine if Iran would have fired a nuclear weapon. Imagine if they would have fired a, a hypersonic nuclear weapon. What would have happened? What am I saying, brothers and sisters? I am saying God is still holding the wind so that you and I are ready for salvation. The question is, are we ready? It is time to finish the work of God which God has given us. How am I contributing or how am I working, co-working with God to finish this work. And my brothers and sisters, 
the call of God is that we can co-work with him. We can partner with him and finish the work that he has given us. This is the call of God and this is the expectation of God as we come to the end of the time or as we are in the period of the time of the end. Shall we pray? Blessed Savior, we thank you for this opportunity. We pray for your power, grace, wisdom, and strength. As we see what is happening in the world, give us grace, O oh Lord. Give us power to have a desire to finish the work that you have given us, to warn the world and to make our calling and election sure. Lord, we pray for your blessing in Jesus' name. Amen. Until then, brothers and sisters, may the Lord truly bless you. I look forward to seeing you in the next edition. Uh, here down south in Africa, sometimes many things will go wrong. Sometimes we don't have electricity. Sometimes we struggle with internet. Many things happen. But we want to thank God that uh, after a struggle last week, we are back on the air now. We pray and hope that God will lead as we seek, de seek to deliver the message of our time and to make us ready for his coming. I'll be giving you an update of what we are doing with our prison ministry because next week we are going to be visiting prison. Until then, continue to be blessed in the Lord and I look forward to see you uh, shortly. Please don't forget to subscribe. Don't forget to share. Don't forget to comment. I look forward to hear from you. God bless.